let's get started with the implementation. Um, so for your convenience, I've added all the steps over here so that we will pick these steps one by one and we'll implement them. Okay, so initially let me uh, import the packages that we're going to need. Since we're going to uh, work with NetworkX, let me import NetworkX. We are also going to display the network, so we might need matplotlib, so I'll import that. We will be randomly choosing the triangles out of all possible triangles. So we'll need the random package. And in order to choose all possible triangles, we might uh, need to use combinations function uh, from uh, ITER, ITER tools package. Uh, we used it in previous video as well. So I'll import ITER tools. So these were the packages. Now let's uh, look at the first step. We have to create a graph with n nodes, where the nodes are the countries. So let me create a graph. This is an empty graph as of now. So let me uh, add the nodes to this graph. Let's initialize this n to 5 uh, and we can change it later. So uh, we are just uh, going to start with a simple network where there are 5 countries. We'll increase that later on so n is equal to 5 we are going to add 5 nodes to it so I'll write we have to add 5 nodes so let me pass a list of 5 uh, nodes over here as a parameter so I'll write i for i in range the nodes should be numbered from 1 to n so I can write i to n plus 1 because uh, range uh, if it starts from 1 to n plus 1 it actually goes from 1 to n so this is what we're going to pass here now we have added the nodes to this graph uh, we have to assign the names uh, to these nodes the country names to these nodes so let me use uh, a dictionary uh, we are we're going to use a dictionary for this because we have this uh, function in network x that is nx dot relabel nodes what this function does is it uh, labels the nodes because as of now the nodes are labeled from 1 to n right uh, that is 1 to 5 in this case we have to assign the uh, country name as a label to all these nodes so we're going to make use of this function relabel nodes from network x the parameters are two the first one is a dictionary uh, let me name this dictionary is mapping that's what we'll pass this dictionary will contain the labels the new labels of the nodes so the key will be the old label and the value will be the new label right uh, the second parameter is the graph itself so we're going to make use of this function for this we first need a dictionary which has uh, the new labels I already have uh, this here I have some uh, random uh, names of the countries so I'm going to use these uh, fictitious names for the countries. So this is our mapping dictionary which we will pass to this uh, graph and the nodes will be relabeled by this function. So the first step is over. We have created a graph with n nodes where the nodes are the countries. Let's go to the second step. The second step is we have to uh, add all possible edges to this graph and we also have to assign a weight either positive or negative to these edges. So let's create a list with two uh, weights, positive and negative. So what we're going to do is we'll randomly choose one of these uh, weights and we'll assign to, to the edges. Since we have to create a complete graph, we have to add all possible edges. So how can we do that? I can start the loop here. So I can write i in g dot nodes for j in g dot nodes if i is not equal to j then we will add this edge so we'll write g dot add edge we have to add the edge between i and j uh, we also have to assign the weight uh, let's call the attribute sign uh, sign is equal to so we have to randomly choose the sign out of these so uh, the function that we can use is random dot choice 
what this function does is it chooses uh, so the parameter is a list that is the signs here out of this the values of this list it randomly chooses one value so out of plus and minus it will randomly choose either plus or minus and will assign to this edge so now we are done with the edges next step is to display the network uh, the command to display the network is nx dot draw g uh, however we want to display a number of other things on the network so we're going to use some extra uh, features of uh, uh, drawing uh, functions from network x for example we can use a layout uh, let me use circular layout so that uh, the nodes are nicely visible so i'll write nx dot circular layout now by default the edge labels are not uh, displayed so we'll have to use an extra function nx dot draw network x edge labels so we're going to use this function and i'll tell you the parameters to this uh, another thing is that when we use this function the labels will be displayed however uh, the labels will be like sign is equal to plus sign is equal to minus uh, we, we don't want that to be displayed like this we just want plus we uh, just want minus we just want the signs not sign is equal to plus so for that we will have to uh, use one more extra function We'll write edge labels is equal to nx dot get edge attributes uh, from g we have to take the attributes and the, the attribute whose value we have to take is sign now these edge labels we are going to uh, pass here the first parameter is g itself the second parameter is the layout that we're using and then we'll pass the edge labels H labels is equal to H labels, which means uh, the the values that we are getting out of this function, those values only should be displayed here. If you want, we, you can change the font size, you can change the font color. So let's use this font size is equal to say 20. You can also change the font color. Let's do that as well. Uh, let's make it red. So these are just uh, some beautification uh, parameters. You you can use them if you want. So uh, just to show you how they work, I'm going to show uh, them in this video. Okay, I think this should be sufficient. So uh, to display the network, we have to use plt.show. So to sum up, we first added the nodes here and we relabeled them. Oh, I think uh, first we passed the graph and then we passed the dictionary. Okay, so first we uh, added the nodes, we relabeled the nodes. Then we added the edges and we assigned a weight to these edges and now we are just going to display this. So let's uh, try um, executing this. Okay, so we go back here and let's execute this. Okay, so this is not coming in a circular layout. Uh, let's go back here. Okay, we have not passed uh, this pause here while we are drawing so we can pass this another thing that we can do is we can change the node the node size as well since you saw that the country names are not uh, visible nicely uh, in the nodes so we can change the size let me do that node size you can specify any size i'm just giving this okay so let's go back here and try to run it oh now this looks better so as you can see here so these are the five countries uh, just for simplicity we have kept uh, less number of countries and we'll increase them later so uh, the the edge labels indicate whether they are friends or enemies to each other now you can see there are some unstable triangles here uh, for example alexandra beerland and bursi you can see that they are all enemies to each other so we we see that the, this kind of uh, these kind of relationships uh, don't tend to stay for a long time in the network they tend to go towards the stable state uh, that's what we will show in our implementation so that is one unstable triangle uh, another unstable triangle uh, let's see yeah alexandra antrim and beerland you see they are all again uh, enemies to each other that's another unstable triangle if you look at antrim eplex and bursi they are all friends to each other so this kind of relationship should stay as it is um, 
So this is uh, the first three steps completed. We have the network with us. Now we have to make it evolve from one state to the other. Let's close it and go back to our program. So let's go to the fourth step now. Now we have the network with us and we have to observe the triangles. So let's uh, execute this 4.1. That is get a list of all the triangles in the network. How do we do that? Uh, to get all the triangles, all the possible triangles, we'll have to choose uh, three nodes from the list of nodes, right? O all possible combinations of three nodes. So for that, we first need a list of all the nodes. So I'm going to get that nodes is equal to g dot nodes. So we got a list of all the nodes. Now we have to uh, out of this list, we have to choose three nodes at a time. So let's create a list tries list uh, which will keep uh, uh, which will keep uh, all the triangles in the network so how do we do that we'll create a list and we'll make use of uh, combinations function here so let's call it x for x in i tools dot combinations out of which list we have to choose we have to choose out of nodes list how many choose uh, nodes we have to choose we have to choose three nodes so so basically what we are doing we are taking out all the combinations of three nodes from this list nodes and since that is in the form of a tuple we are going to store that in the form of a list and that list we will store in this list that is tries list so basically this tries list will be a list of list where every item of this list will be a list having the three nodes from the network. These three nodes will indicate a triangle. Now that we have the triangles, we have to see whether these triangles are stable or not and which ones of these are unstable so that we can, uh, you can, uh, we can uh, implement uh, moving them towards a, a stable state. So for that we have to see what are the uh, the weights on the edges on these triangles uh, we are going to create a function for that uh, before that we will create a list that will keep track of all the signs of these edges so I, i'll create a list and we'll call a function we'll just create that we'll pass the triangles list in that and we'll pass the graph so this function uh, we will just create uh, what this function will do is it will take the triangles list and the graph as the parameter and it will return a list where the list where this list is a list of list and every uh, element of this list will have the the signing details of the triangles uh, let me write it as a comment here for example this would be a list and this list will have a number of other lists like this and these lists will have the signing details of uh, every edge. For example, this will have plus, plus, minus, and so on. So this will be a list of lists, this all signs, which will, will be returned by this function. We'll just create this function. Now go to the next step. Once we have gotten all the sign details of the triangles, we have to check how many unstable triangles are there. So let me create a variable here and let me create a function also count unstable we'll pass this all signs list here so that this function uh, can tell us how many are unstable triangles in all these uh, in all this list okay so once uh, these two functions are created uh, we we are, we'll be done with the four steps now let's go back and implement this function first get signs of triangles so we'll go up and we'll create a function. The parameters as we passed here, uh, we basically need a triangle list and we uh, need the graph as well. So we'll pass them here. So what do we have to do in, in this function? As an input, we have tries list. Let me show you the the format of tries list so it's going to be a list with element lists uh, in it and 
this list will have the nodes for example four five three so this is an example and the output has to be the sign list uh, let, let's call this one so so basically we have to the the, the triangle is the one which is uh, comprising of the nodes 1, node 2, node 3. So we have to see the sign between 1 and 2 and we have to store it here. We have to see the sign between 2 and 3, we have to store it here. And we have to see the sign between 1 and 3 and we have to store it here, right? So the output will be something like this. For example, so this plus indicates that the sign between first and second node of the triangle is plus. This minus indicates that the sign between second and third node of the triangle is this. And this indicates that the sign between first and third node of the triangle is this. So this is how uh, we are going to uh, create the all signs list and that's what we will return from this function. Similarly, uh, the, the format of the second list and all subsequent lists will be like this one. So we will create this empty list that we are going to return. Now. For every uh, list inside this, what we have to do? We have to do something. So we are going to uh, start a loop for every uh, element list inside this list. So for i in range length of uh, tries list. Now, how do we get the signing uh, sign details? Uh, of these edges the sign details are stored in the graph so we are going to uh, take the signs from the graph only so all signs is an empty list it it should be returned as this list so we have to uh, add a list as an element here so i'll create a temporary list and i'll keep adding values to this list and ultimately we'll add this list to all signs so how can we get the sign? The sign we'll get from G and tries list ith elements, zeroth entry and the first entry. This will be the first node. And the second node will be tries list ith element, first element, uh, oh, I'm sorry, uh, one will be there okay so what we are doing is we are passing first parameter here which is tries list ith elements zeroth value so if this is the ith element the zeroth value will be one and second parameter is tries list ith elements first entry so ith elements first entry which is two here so we want to get the the sign of the edge between one and two so the third parameter is the sign that we will pass here. Now whatever sign we get out of here, we have to store that in temp. So I'll write tem dot append this whole thing. Similarly, we have to get the sign between 2 and 3 and we have to get the sign between 1 and 3. So I'm just going to copy paste this. <coughs> So initially, uh, this is the sign between 0 and 1. The, six, the second will be the sign between 1 and first and second uh, entry. And the third will be sign between second and 0th entry, right? Or 0th or second entry. This is undirected, so you can use it either way. So by this time, we have uh, gotten this uh, temp list, which we have to store in all signs. So I'm going to write all signs dot append the stem right so we have done it for all the all the lists in the tries list in the end of this list we can uh, in the end of this for loop we can return all signs this was the implementation of the first function that is get signs of uh, triangle so we have now stored the signing details of all the triangles and now let's get back here uh, the second function that we uh, have been using and uh, we are yet to implement is count unstable. So now we have all the sign details in this list, all signs which we which has been returned by uh, this function. This list we will pass to uh, the next function which will count the number of plus 
in every list and will tell us whether it is stable or not and it also will keep a track of the total number of unstable triangles so let's now implement this function count unstable let's go up here uh, the parameter was uh, all signs right and it is returning a variable which is unstable uh, okay so we'll write all signs here and it is returning a variable unstable uh, let's also keep a track of uh, stable triangles so initialize to zero now we have all signs as a parameter and you know that the format of all signs is like this where every uh, element list uh, has uh, the number of plus and minus given in it so we can simply count the number of uh, plus and minus and we can get to know whether the triangle is stable or not so we can start a loop here length of all signs i'm sorry length of all signs so for every element we have to pick one element list from all signs and we have to count the number of uh, plus and minus in that or we can simply count the number of plus uh, as we discussed in the previous video so if if all signs ith list dot count what do we have to count we have to count plus if it is equal to 3 or or if this is equal to 1 then uh, uh, what we discussed in that case the the list will be stable so we can increase the stable count in this case on the other hand uh, let's use else if on the other hand if the total number of plus is equal to 0 or 2 then it will be unstable so I'm just copying pasting here so if the total number of plus is 2 or it is 0 then it will be unstable so we'll increase the unstable count here so I think we are done <clears throat> so by the end of this for loop we would have the total number of stable and unstable triangles in the uh, network uh, which we want to keep track of in order to know whether the, the complete network has become stable or not so we can print this information so that we can keep track of it so let's print um, number of stable triangles uh, let's also print the total number of triangles Okay, similarly, I'm just doing it so that while executing the code, we can keep track of what's going on. Number of unstable triangles out of stable plus unstable are unstable. Okay. So I think we are done with these two uh, functions implementation. Let's go back uh, here. And okay, so uh, we have implemented this and we have implemented this. So it should work fine. Uh, let's try executing it and see whether it is telling us the the stable and unstable triangle count or not okay let's execute this and okay let's check uh, this is the graph that we just visualized i am going to close it okay we are getting this number of stable triangles out of 10 are 4 so total number of triangles are 10 and uh, the stable are 4 and unstable are 6 okay so this is working fine let's go back uh, in the next part of the video we will see how we can choose an unstable triangle and we how we can move it to a stable state so we will do it for all the triangles and the network will eventually become stable